Okay, welcome. You might be thinking to yourself, the top eight RPGs that you should play on the PS2 or that I should play, because if I'm thinking as you, well, today I'm gonna show you what I think are some great RPG recommendations. Why eight? Now, I don't know, that seemed like a good number. Now these are not the best RPGs on, on the PS2. These are just eight recommendations that I think are worth playing and that maybe don't get mentioned in every single list. Have you seen these on list before? Maybe, I don't know. But today I'm hoping to give you a different take on it by looking at some of these games, talking about them briefly, telling you my experience with them, and maybe, just maybe, convincing you to give one of these a try. So let's get started. Now, this is in no particular order. This is just eight of eight PS2 RPGs that I think are pretty great and that I like for one reason or another. So without further ado, let's start. Now, like I said, no particular order. So here's number one, The Lord of the Rings, The Third Age. Is this game good? Eh, debatable. I remember getting this game, I think I rented it actually when I was younger. I was a huge Lord of the Rings fan. When I saw Lord of the Rings for the first time, oh, it blew my mind. That was something, it was a huge life-changing experience for me to experience Lord of the Rings. So when I saw there was a game and it was an RPG, I was a huge RPG fan. After playing games like Final Fantasy, anything turn-based, I wanted it. Uh, this was turn-based, it looked cool, it was set in the world, the lore is awesome. It's not the best game in the world, it gets the job done. It's definitely faithful to the whole turn-based combat mechanisms. But if you like Lord of the Rings, or you just like turn-based RPGs, this is a great way to go. Number one, Lord of the Rings, third age. Number two, now this game can be kind of div div divisive. Divisive, I think that's a good word for this on its ending, or let's call it its halfway mark. There's a twist, there's a, a, let's just call it a turn that takes place. And when this happens, fans are usually pretty divided on if they like it or not. But, you know, to each their own. The gameplay is, I think, what matters the most here. And the gameplay in this game is pretty cool. It's not turn-based, it's more of an action. And that's Star Ocean till the end of time. Now this game, very large scope, we'll call it for like a sci-fi RPG. Now it's very turn-based as most, I mean not turn-based, sorry, very action-based as a lot of the Star Ocean games are. Um, but it's really cool. The story, it's kind of got like an anime aesthetic vibe to it in a way with the art style, the way it looks. But even today, like even playing it on a base PS2 on like my TV, it looks pretty good. Um, you can play on widescreen, it's great. Um, the combat's really fun. That's what I think is most important. The story, can be a little, eh, but like I said, if you're looking for something fun to play and you're looking for something that'll take you a while, this is your game. Cool. Now this game, when I was, when I was younger, I remember getting this game and not fully understanding what I was doing, but I loved like every second of it. Uh, I thought it was really cool. The concept was new to me at the time going into a game world and being stuck there was actually a new concept that's been overused a little bit now in like anime and a few other games but dot hack infection this is a huge series and the later games are pretty expensive but the first game a great way to get into it is awesome i really like it um the combat we'll call it could be a little simplistic but it's also pretty fun pretty fast paced i liked it a lot it's like a hybrid turn-based action kind of a system going on. But when it comes down to it, I thought it was a really fun experience. I really like it. The story is pretty cool. Um, the game itself, the gameplay exploring, finding new codes to enter into different areas is pretty cool. And just overall, the experience was pretty great. Um, also, if you can, if you can track down a good copy of it, it comes with a, a DVD, like different episodes. They made an anime and each one of these, I think there's four parts, comes with a new part of the anime which like explains the story a little bit more. But definitely, I think, worth giving a shot. The graphics are a little, they don't hold up that well, but they're not that bad. They're still, they're still, they get the job done. And I thought the experience was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. And I'll always remember, for whatever reason, the character, Balmung of the Azure Sky. I don't know why that stuck with me, but I remember hearing that as a kid and be like, wow, what a name. 
And I don't know why that stuck out to me, but I always remember that. And that's where I, I always like remember the color Azure. And whenever I hear Azure or I think of the color, which is not really a common color, but when I think of it, for whatever reason, I think of the color Azure, I always think of Balmung of the Azure sky. So I'm gonna blame this game for making me think of Azure. Great, so that's number three. Uh, remember, no particular order. Number four, I'm gonna go with Dragon Quest Eight. Dragon Quest is a great series. Most of the games are pretty great. And when I say most, I basically mean all of them. I played a good deal of them. I have not played every single Dragon Quest, but I played a good portion of them. Eight, I really enjoyed this game. The art style, the... I really liked how in this one they had voice acting. I thought that was great. I, I'm a huge fan of voice acting in games. Um, the combat was awesome. Very, It's turn-based. The story was really cool. Um, and then the graphics are just amazing. They really hold up well. The whole, like... The hand-drawn like anime aesthetic, it just looks really good. And I think this game is definitely worth your time. I'm sure you've seen this on the list before, but it's a great recommendation. You should definitely try it out, especially because Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball, drew this. He draws most of the Dragon Quest characters. So there you go. There's another reason, which I'm sure you already knew. But hey, if you didn't, cool, there you go. Check it out. So Dragon Quest Eight and check it out. And back in the day, it came with a playable demo of Final Fantasy XII. Oh, which is in here somewhere, yep, in the back. Oh, Final Fantasy XII, it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a spoiler, not on my list. I was just not a fan of the, the combat. It's, it's cool, I've played it since, and um, I really wanna go back and finish it. It's one of those games that I wanna finish, but I have not. But Final Fantasy XII is a story for another day. We'll get there. All right, cool, number five, number five. Wild Arms 3. Again, we're going with something different. Um, this is very Wild West themed. I still have not played Wild Arms 1 or 2, and I desperately want to. I'm trying hard to acquire a copy of each one so I can play it. Um, they look really cool, but Wild Arms 3 has got a great, different atmosphere. It's like a Wild West theme. Um, big, big world. There's a bunch of different characters. In the beginning, it's really cool because it starts off with like a standoff gunfight. Um, and then you go through a scenario for each one of those characters to kind of learn their backstory. I thought it was a really interesting and like unique kind of spin on meeting the characters and, and starting to the game and kind of introducing you to the gameplay mechanics and what each character can do. So it's turn-based, um, it's a standard affair, but it's a cool atmosphere. And I think the atmosphere is what really does it for this game and the music, oh, incredible. But I think that's what really sets this game apart is the atmosphere, the world, the setting, that whole thing just gives it a different feeling. Number five, all right, number six. Now this is, if you're looking for a game that's difficult, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Now this game is awesome. I love the vibe in this game. When I, I remember when I put this in for the first time and I thought to myself, wow, this is dark, this is weird, this is cool. And it blew my mind and I thought it was incredible. The world, the setting, the atmosphere was so bleak and just different from anything that I had really played at that time. Um, I think before I played this, I actually, I had played a Persona game before I played this. And so I was kind of expecting that from this, but that is not what I got. Persona, even though Persona can be pretty dark, um, in comparison to this, was very light and, you know, it's got that more anime funny vibe. This, on the other hand, is just different and cool. Oh, and it features Dante from Devil May Cry. <laughs> kind of. Now, uh, I think it's awesome. It's very worth your time. Basically, your one character in your party is kind of like you recruit them, almost like Pokemon. You're like catching the demons, talking to them, very, you know, SMT persona style where you're like recruiting these demons, but it's a really cool experience. Definitely worth your time. It is difficult, but if you can grind it out, if you can like find a decent build online or like, you know, create your own build that you think is going to be good and go through this and really set out some time to play it, it's worth it. It's fun. It's cool. It's great. Number seven is a very different game. It's kind of out there. And I, I had not really heard much about this game until like I stumbled upon a review for it just out of nowhere. I don't even remember how I kind of came upon it, but I did. And when I did, it, it like I was like, whoa, what is this? I had heard of the original game on the PS1, but I never really played it. And the second game up the ante a little bit, and that's Jade Cocoon 2. And I don't think the artwork on the front does it justice. I think it... Based on the art style in here, it's very anime, almost like a, geez, like a studio Gib Ghibli, Ghibli vibe, whatever, Ghibli, don't, don't, don't flame me online. A very uh, a vibe to like that, like the aesthetic, it's very cool. And uh, fully voice acted, very 
anime. It's kind of like a Pokemon game where you're like collecting different creatures and leveling them up and evolving them. Um, but you're going through like this really cool story and it's got a really cool vibe. It's different. It's very different. And that's what I think I liked about it is that it's so different from other things that I've played and kind of stood apart, stood out to me because of that. So it's a, it's a great time and I highly recommend it. I think if you give it some time, there's a character or two who could be a little annoying with their voice acting, but if you if you really get into it, it's a fun time. It's got a turn-based combat system, um, but it's, it's different. It's like this big wheel that you can spin, almost like, I think there was a Pokemon game, like eventually they made those like, what is it, I don't remember what it was called, but it was like you can like spin, and like your Pokemon's here, then it spins, and you go to the next one. Like a roulette style thing. It was kind of like that, where you have a spinning wheel of like the people you've recruited. Very different, but very cool awesome atmosphere. Give it a try. All right, and our last entry, number eight, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm, this is three games, but they are 100% worth your time. The sprawling atmosphere, the awesome sci-fi aesthetic, the crazy story that is massive and that they tried to at least do something a little bit more than they did on the PS1, at least in ability-wise. What I'm talking about is, of course, the Xenosaga series. We have three, two, and one. So probably start with one. That'll probably be the best uh, option for you. Now, Xeno Gears came out on PS1. I played that, and I thought it was incredible. Um, I love that game. However, the second disc, you know, is a little rushed, if you haven't heard of that before. It's definitely rushed. This is made by the same group. You know, the Xeno series. Now they have, you know, uh, Xeno... What are they on now? Xenoblade, right? They have all those games. Like this is Xenosaga. This was right before that. Originally, was Xeno, Xeno Gears was on the PS One. Xenosaga is at least they were able to make more than one game. So they had like a big, it's a big sprawling epic tale that you start off in one and you go all the way to three. Most people consider two to be the weakest out of the three games, which I would agree with. But honestly, for whatever reason, maybe it's because I heard that so much, I actually enjoyed two the most. Now the ending, the overall ending is spectacular and the experience of playing through three and getting through all those games and finally getting to the end was an awesome feeling. However, I just, whatever, for whatever reason, the vibe, the, the, just my time playing it, number two really stood out to me. Maybe it was the time in like in my life in which I played it or something, but that really stood out to me. So I think you can't really go wrong with any of these games, but I definitely think that these eight are a great starting point or are a great moving on point if you've already played some ps2 rpgs that are always recommended like final fantasy 10 right so if you're looking for something give one of these a shot i definitely think they're worth your time oh that was a lot all right well anyways have a good one